Hey, what's up engineers? Lately I've been wanting the ability to create network topologies quickly that I can use as an underlay for NSXT. This will allow me to validate use cases or perform customer specific demos. For example, if the customer is a Cumulus shop, then the demos must utilize Cumulus underlay networking. Now I totally understand NSXT doesn't care what the underlay is, but providing customer specific demos like this goes a long way in building rapport with the networking team when attempting to pitch NSXT. Purchasing physical switches was out of the question, as they tend to be expensive, loud, and consume a lot of power. So in my situation, I wanted to leverage some sort of network emulator and decided on EVNG Pro because it supports multiple network vendors, has a nice HTML5 interface, and is easy to use. So before we jump into EVNG, let's quickly review the topology we're gonna to build. As you can see, we have a total of five cumulus switches, two spines, and three leafs, connected to an out-of-band management network. This network provides IP addressing for the switches via a DHCP server, and is also where our Ansible server lives, allowing us to execute playbooks against the switches. Leaf 1 and Leaf 2 connect to the NSXT edge nodes, while Leaf 3 provides access to external networks. In this lab, we will use slash 30 subnets to establish IP connectivity between the spine and leaf switches, and BGP will handle all routing decisions. The spine switches will be in AS65100, while the leaf switches will have their own respective AS numbers. For instance, leaf one will be in 65101, leaf two will be in 65102, etc. Now let's jump into EVNG and begin building. I wanted to make a quick note. I won't be discussing how EVNG is deployed or configured in my environment. If this is something that interests you, let me know in the comments down below and I can certainly make a follow-up video. All right, as you can see, we have a blank canvas. So let's add some nodes and networks. We'll start with the nodes by clicking add an object in the upper left hand corner and selecting node. As you can see, we are presented with a list of templates. Notice a bunch of them are grayed out. This is because we haven't added any images for those specific templates. In the search box, type cumulus and select it. We'll begin by increasing the number of nodes from one to five. Then we'll select an image we want to use. In this case, version 3.7.7. Leave the default name for now, as we will change this later. Finally, let's increase the CPU count to two, the RAM to 512 megabytes, and the ethernet ports to five, and click save. Woohoo! We have five switches on the campus. Now, let's add four networks. By heading back up to the add an object, this time selecting network. The first network we'll create is the out of band management network for our switches. Let's name it out of band management. Below that, we have type dropdown. Now, depending on how you deployed EVNG, your selection might be different. In my environment, I will select cloud one and click save. Now we can rinse and repeat these steps a few times. One for external, connecting to cloud two. One for NSXT01, connecting to cloud three. And finally, one for NSXT02, connecting to cloud four. With everything on the canvas, let's organize the objects to replicate what was shown in the diagram earlier and connect the switches. We'll start by connecting each zero for all the switches to the out-of-band management network. Then we'll connect spine one, switch port one to leaf one, switch port one. Next, we'll connect spine one, switch port two to spine two, switch port one. And we'll just repeat this for the rest of the switches. Awesome. Now that our switches are connected, we can power them on by selecting more actions and clicking start all nodes. I'll open the console for spine one and log in with Cumulus and the default password, Cumulus Linux Bang. To confirm it has received an IP address, I'll run the net show interface command. And as you can see, we have an IP address. I'll quickly repeat this process for the other switches. And that's it. That's all we need to do from an EVNG perspective. Now let's look at the Ansible playbook responsible for configuring the switches. Let's switch to VS Code and review the directory structure for our Ansible playbook. As you can see, it's a basic Ansible folder structure. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. The README file just provides a high level overview of the topology. 
the Lab01 YAML file is our playbook that runs a single play called Underlay Network Configuration, which executes two roles, routing and common. The host file is our Ansible inventory file, broken into two groups, leaf and spine. These are then added as a child object to the network group. Note the playbook calls the network group as this ensures Ansible runs against all switches. The Ansible config file sets the default settings for the Ansible environment. The roles folder contains two subdirectories, common and routing. These folders essentially contains tasks that run against the switches. For example, if we look at common tasks folder, we can see there are three tasks that will run. The first sets the host name, the second copies over the SSH keys, and the last one changes the default password. In the routing files directory, we can see each switch has its own folder containing configuration files for the daemon, BGP settings, as well as interface settings. The group underscore vars folder contains a file called all, which is the global variables file. The vault folder contains an encrypted password variable called my underscore password that is used to change the switch's default password. Finally, we have a docs folder that contains any relevant documentation related to the playbook. In this case, we have a topology diagram of our lab. Now for the moment of truth. Let's kick off this playbook by running the following command. Ansible dash playbook space lab one dot YAML space dash I. Here we're gonna reference our host file space dash dash ask vault pass will prompt us for the password in order to decrypt the variable file. And the dash K will prompt us for the default password for the switch. We'll be prompted for the SSH and vault passwords. And once I hit enter, the playbook will execute against the switches and we'll see a play recap at the end. Let's now jump back into EVNG and perform some tests. Let's open the console for leaf one and run the same command we ran earlier, net show interface. Before we only had a single IP address for ETH zero. Now, as you can see, we have multiple interfaces with IP addresses. Next, we'll look at the BGP status and the route table by running the following commands. Net show BGP summary. And as you can see, we have three neighbors that establish connectivity. If we run net show route IPv4, we can see leaf one has learned the default route from leaf three, as well as the subnet 172.18.48.0 slash 24 was learned from the NSXT environment. We can confirm external connectivity by pinging 1.1.1.1, which we can successfully do. Now we can test connectivity to the NSXT environment by pinging 172.18.48.100, which is a VM attached to a tier one logical router in the NSXT domain. And voila, we have communication. Remember in the beginning when I mentioned customer specific demos? Well, in EVNG, you can create multiple labs. If I power down all the nodes and close out of the current lab, I can navigate to a Cisco specific environment. that we can easily use with NSXT. That's gonna wrap up this video. As you have seen, utilizing EVNG gives us the ability to easily swap out the underlay networking to meet our needs. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next video.